Today, I embark on an incredible journey from the southernmost railway station in Europe to Madrid, passing through some of the most breathtaking railway scenery in Spain. I'll introduce you to the train, show you the stunning views, share details about the upcoming replacement and take you on an unforgettable adventure. Come along! Hola y bienvenidos a Algeciras. Hi and welcome to Algeciras, the southernmost railway station in Europe. Today, this is a somewhat sleepy station, but in the past, Algeciras was a busy village. Passenger trains went all the way to the port, allowing a direct transfer to the ships heading to Morocco. There was even a service, the Morocco Express, from Paris to Casablanca, with transfers in Andaya, Algeciras and Tangier. Now the station is much quieter, with three daily stopping services to Antequera and one daily intercity service to Madrid, the train that I'm taking today. Access to the platforms at most long-distance stations in Spain is reserved for train passengers and is only possible after passing security control, which I did. Today's intercity service has a class 334 leading the train along with the consist of Talgo Series 6 cars, also called Talgo 200. Class 334s are currently the only diesel locomotives used by Renfe for passenger services. The locomotives, introduced in 2006, can reach 200 km per hour and have a power output of 2500 kW, making them true workhorses. The Talgo cars were manufactured in the early 1990s for services utilizing high-speed lines up to a certain point and a conventional network from there to a final destination, similar to the service we are using today. They were used on routes to destinations such as Malaga, Granada and others. Additionally, there were Talgo 6s used for night services between Spain and France until 2013. These cars were also exported to countries like Germany, Kazakhstan and the United States, where they were utilized on the Cascade service. On this route, the Talgo 6s are reaching the end of their life. Renfe has announced that until the end of 2024, these trains will be replaced by class 730s. The new trains will have more capacity and will be able to travel faster, reaching speeds of 250 km per hour on the high-speed line from Antequera Santa Ana to Madrid, as opposed to the current 200 km per hour of the Talgo 6s with class 252 locomotives. With these little tidbits, we got to my seat, 2A at car 2. At 2.58 pm, on time, we depart Algeciras, starting our trip to Madrid. I can't wait to show you the fantastic scenery in a few minutes. Already moving, it's time for today's trip map. Today's trip covers a distance of 635 km in 6 hours and 12 minutes, from Algeciras to Madrid with stops at several stations, including Ronda, Antequera Santa Ana, Córdoba, Puerto Llano and Ciudad Real. The journey from Algeciras to Antequera Santa Ana is on the conventional line. There, the train goes through the gate-changing facility and switches from the diesel locomotive to a class 252 electric with the remainder of the 455 km to Madrid on the high-speed line. 12 minutes after the start of the journey, we make our first stop at San Roque La Línea. This station is the closest to Gibraltar, at a distance of around 16 km or 30 minutes by taxi. It's a brief stop and soon we are underway again, being this a good time to show you my quite comfortable seat. To make the seats aligned with the windows, they end up being quite far from each other, providing generous legroom. There's a pocket, a litter bin, 
and the big sturdy table. On the wall side there are the recline button and the controls for the audio channels with one of them connected to the TV. Under the seat there's a 220 volt power socket and above an individual reading light. Let's go to the cafeteria and have today's food and scenery. Entering one of the many tunnels, I take the opportunity to show you this area in detail. The atmosphere on Renfe's bars always feels very calm and comfortable. Do you enjoy it too? I'm staying quiet now, allowing you to soak in the superb scenery as if you were experiencing the trip yourself. Finally, after an epic journey, we reach Honda, one of the most beautiful villages in Andalusia. We departed Algeciras at an altitude of 9 meters, reaching 740 meters here, an ascent of 731 meters in 106 kilometers. This is why the track meanders so much along the mountains, it needs to gain altitude, and even doing it this way, Gradients on this line reach 23 meters of elevation per 1000 meters of track. In railway terms, this is quite steep. After the arrival of the class 599 operating a stopping service from Antequera to Algeciras, we can continue our trip. The scenery from here onwards is different. Due to a much smoother landscape, Agriculture is practiced on this plateau, so we no longer see the rough nature as before. One of the highlights of this trip is the gauge-changing facility just before Antequera Santa Ana. Here, the train switch is from the 1668mm Iberian gauge to the international 1435mm gauge. The process is swift, due to Talgo's wheel arrangement with independent wheels allowing the transition to occur as the train passes through the facility at 15 km per hour. These facilities have existed since 1968, 
when they were originally used for direct trains from Spain to France, without requiring passengers to change trains at the borders. Later, in 1992, with the opening of the first high-speed line in Spain from Madrid to Sevilla, they started being used to allow direct services to destinations in the conventional network with the trains using the high-speed line as much as possible to reduce travel times. As the high-speed network keeps expanding, the gauge-changing facilities change places, with some being dismantled when high-speed lines are built, eliminating the need for them, while more are added when necessary. For a number of years, they have been a common and most welcome feature of the Spanish railways. Being a locomotive old train, it also switches the class 334 that has been with us since Algeciras to an electric class 252 for the remainder of the trip to Madrid Puerta de Atocha. After Antequera Santa Ana, we ride the rails at 200 km per hour. Do you want to see something funny? Do you remember my video about the Avril and my orange juice shaking on the table? This is my drink today, in a 30-year-old Talgo 6. Make of that what you will. We make a few more stops before reaching Madrid, so this is a good time to talk about prices for this trip. The total cost was 63 euros and 90 cents which includes a separate charge of 5 euros for seat selection, for a ticket bought 20 days before traveling. Fares can vary based on the time of purchase and the specific train. Overall, it seems like a reasonable price for a 650 km trip, although I do find the 5 euro charge for seat selection a bit stingy on Renfe's part. Maybe it should be included in the price and just allow everybody to choose their preferred seats? As we arrive at Madrid Puerta de Atocha, I also want to share something else with you. Remember the videos I made from Casablanca to Tangier and the ferry trip from Tangier to Tarifa and Algeciras last week? You can combine all these trips and travel from Casablanca and Rabat to Madrid in just one day, without flying. It can be a great option if you want to make the trip an integral part of your overall travel experience. Before disembarking, I'd like to give you a tour of the train's interior, now that most passengers have already left. I hope you appreciate these sober interiors as much as I do. As I walk along the station, I want to share my thoughts about today's trip. The train is comfortable, although it does have some characteristic noises coming from the car's suspensions, which seem to be a trademark of the Talgo's 4, 5 and 6 series. It's not a big deal, but it would be better if the noises didn't exist. The scenery is incredible and alone makes the trip worthwhile. The service is typical of Renfe, friendly, polite, very professional and even joyful. In terms of timing, we departed and arrived on time, which is what is expected from an experienced train operator like Renfe. Overall, it was a very nice trip and one that I'm happy to have made.
As I get near to the class 252 locomotive, I want to express my gratitude to you for joining me on this journey. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, subscribe to my channel and leave a comment below. Your support is incredibly helpful and means a lot. Thank you for being here and see you next week.